You may not know, but as a little said hostel of mine, I've been a full-time graphic designer for the last, let's say, couple hundred of years, and my go-to program to do fancy stuff was, and is, Photoshop, of course. For years, Adobe has ruled the world of graphic design and video editing. Photoshop is an industry standard, and even a verb these days, but lately a lot of us have started wondering, is it still worth it? Let's take a step back. It's 2012. This was the last year we had the option to buy our apps in a single solution. Let's be honest, Adobe was never cheap. A copy of Photoshop CS6 was a little less than 700 euros or 699 Krusty Burgers for my freedom friends. In 2013, they announced the Creative Cloud, a subscription-based platform to have access to every app. I rely on multiple Adobe apps for my work, some daily and some occasionally. Sure, Photoshop alone might be around 20 euros a month and the full suite is like 65 I think, but when you add it all up, it's like I'm leasing the whole office when I'm using only one desk or two. Again, let's be honest, it's not that much, and it gave the possibility to access to those programs to even a larger number of users. But I understand, for freelancers or even small studios, the cost will add up really really fast. It's a never-ending payment, and if you stop, you won't have access to the app anymore. And sometimes I feel a little betrayed. For all the money spent, I still encounter bugs that get dragged from version to version unfixed. But do you really have any alternatives? With Photoshop holding roughly 42% of the graphic design software market, it's no wonder it's a standard. Other widely used design software, of course they are from Adobe, like InDesign and Illustrator. Only in 4th place, with 10% of the market, there is Canva. Now, I don't know if it's due to their recent acquisition, but Affinity Photo, the software we are talking about today, isn't on this list but it's everywhere on my social media and YouTube. Affinity Photo is a one-time payment app and it's not a Photoshop clone like Photopea, but it's rather a software aimed to the same work and users. At the first glance, you can even see no difference between the two interfaces, except for <laughs> these colored icons. Uh, brother, uh, what's that? What's that, brother? You have a top bar with menus, the left toolbar with all the main toys, and the right panels with all the information you possibly want. But more or less, here's where the similarities end. Yes, a lot of things share the name and even the position on the various menus, but if you come from Photoshop, you will immediately feel completely lost. After nearly 20 years with Photoshop, certain actions have become second nature. I know the shortcuts by heart, and can practically give someone instruction over the phone without even looking at the screen. Shortcuts are not just convenient, they are their own workflow language. Switching to a new software, even if it looks similar, means relearning everything from scratch. With Affinity, it feels like trading a similar friend for a polite stranger who's trying too hard to fit in. Thanks to Computer Jesus, at least you can customize shortcuts, but that's it. A lot of other core actions in everyday use don't rely solely on that. And for example, understanding how the layer works in this software compared to Photoshop is a nightmare. It's like they wanted to reinvent the wheel and ended up with a square. These and a lot of other things will add up to the time spent on a project, and that, unfortunately, is a huge cost to pay. Another big missed opportunity with Affinity is their feature. Whether you love it or rate it, Photoshop consistently brings the latest technology with updates that turn hours-long tasks into minutes or even seconds. Great automatic selection tools, the removing tool that works like magic and generative AI in Photoshop allows users to work at light speed. Unfortunately, Affinity is still catching up with beta features now attempting to match selection tools that Photoshop introduced long ago. Maybe the involvement of Canva will speed up the development, but at the moment, those two software are 10 years apart. So at this point I have to ask, who is Affinity really for? In my opinion, it's not for professionals who use Photoshop daily for multiple tasks and need to work fast. Affinity, of course, will be cheaper up front, but the slowdown in productivity cancels out that cost savings. For those who don't need speed, maybe hobbyists or beginners who want to learn without a monthly bill, Affinity makes sense. But in that case, why not use a free program like GIMP or GIMP, whatever you want to call it, 
or a Photoshop clone like Photopea, here's the reality. We have alternatives on the market today, but none of them are really on par with Adobe. Affinity gets close and in some ways it's an interesting compromise, but for a professional time is as valuable as money. And if saving on a subscription ends up costing hours, well, for me that's not really a saving. In my opinion, if they had kept all the core functions identical to Photoshop and focused on fixing bugs and offered some performance boosts here and there, even if it was a Photoshop without AI, I'd seriously consider using it. But with all the unnecessary changes that disrupt the workflow, it's just not an option for me, unfortunately. But in the end, the only things that matter is use whatever tool makes you happy. Those tools are perfectly fine if they work for you, because at the end of the day, the result is what is really important. It's not about the tools, it's about you. So, where do you stand? Are you team Affinity or maybe team Adobe? Or do you have any other tools that you rely on? Drop a comment and let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future content.